Good morning. Happy Friday. You made it to Friday. I hope you had a wonderful week. Um, hopefully there were some good highlights during your week. Hopefully it was the best it could have been. And um, I hope that today is a fabulous day for you and that you've got some good weekend plans coming up that you can relax and regroup and and just refresh. So again, happy Friday. If you're just getting here, it's um, 6.50, so nice and early this morning, a little bit later than the last couple mornings, but still ready to go. So this morning, we're going to talk about factoring with the ladder method. So I just want to say that I started using this about six years ago or so with sixth grade math students. And at that time, I didn't find this in a teacher's manual. I didn't find it online anywhere. In fact, when we kind of stumbled upon it in my sixth grade math class, I searched online to see if I could find anyone who was using the ladder method for factoring, and I couldn't find anything. So I went to um, my seventh grade teachers in our building, and I asked if I show students how to do factoring this way, will it mess anything up for you when you teach factoring? Because, you know, sometimes as a middle school math teacher, you get students coming from elementary school that have learned certain tricks and it doesn't always help them when they're doing, you know, math in middle school. So I went to my seventh grade math teacher and said, do you see any problem with this? Is there any reason I shouldn't teach this this way? And they couldn't find any issue with it. So I started teaching it this way and it has really been helpful for kids to think about factoring with the ladder method. So we kind of stumbled upon it. We had taught GCF with the ladder method. And then as we were going into factoring, I had some students who were using the ladder method to find their GCF and use that in their factoring. So this is how it was working. We would take the expression and have the same expression that I used, or the same numbers I used yesterday, put the expression in the ladder. And just like you find GCF with the ladder method, they go through the GCF process. So again, I do with the prime numbers, have the prime number out first. Okay, and then they can take out a seven. And this has no more common factors, so they stop there. So the way this converts then into their final factored expression is they take you know, the GCF on the outside. And then they take what's down here at the bottom, the remaining factors, and they put that into their parentheses. And it kind of organizes that information for them really well, and it helps them remember what goes where. So we tried this with some other expressions that were a little bit more complicated, um, and I'll show just one of them. So hopefully I don't run out of room at the bottom here. We'll look at 40 x squared plus 24x and I'm just going to turn that plus sign right into my ladder. Okay, so students are going to take out a common factor. We'll start with 2 and again, I hope I don't run out of room. Um, so that leaves us with 20x squared and 12x and then they take out another 2. 10x squared 6x take out another two, 5x squared and 3x. And now they can see the only thing that is still in common is the x, 5x and 3. Okay, and so they take all of these factors that are along the side, multiply those together, and we have 8x. Is that still visible on screen? And then these go in the parentheses, 5 x plus 3. Okay, so again, it helps them remember that the factors along the outside are their GCF. That goes out here on the side. I'm going to move my computer just a little bit so you can see that. And then the, the factors that are left at the bottom are the ones that go into the parentheses. So if you are a 7th or 8th grade math teacher and you see any issue with teaching it this way, please leave me a comment and let me know because as like I said at the beginning, I talked to my 7th and 8th grade math teachers, and they did not see an issue with teaching it that way. Although it's kind of a trick, it's not mathematically incorrect. It doesn't take out any of the steps mathematically. It just does them in a different way. So that is factoring with the ladder method. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. 
And again, I hope you have a fabulous, fabulous Friday and a great, great weekend. I will see you next week.